Welcome back Defenders, Jake here. Today's video has to be entirely dedicated to the destruction of the Nova Kokovka hydroelectric power plant. I could share with you pictures and videos all day of the humanitarian and ecological disaster. These are people's homes, these are people's lives currently being washed away. But unfortunately in this video, I have to battle Russian disinformation. Dam destroyed, accusations fly, waters rise. And of course, Russia is never going to take responsibility for blowing up this dam. It doesn't matter what evidence is presented, the Russian government will never acknowledge it. And of course, the Russians are saying the Ukrainians did it. Ukraine attacked the dam to regroup its forces and inflict humanitarian damage. Because the Russian government will never take responsibility, there are international actors and international institutions that are just going to say, well, I guess it'll remain a mystery forever. And for people even who support Ukraine, they want to be cautious until the evidence is presented. As an example, here's Ambassador McFowl. This is what he says. Okay, my Twitter followers are right. I stand corrected. We all should wait and get confirmation about what caused this dam to break. I will wait too. But the pattern of Russian officials lying is a long one. They don't get the benefit of the doubt. Even the UN chief is hedging its bets, saying Ukraine dam destruction a consequence of Russian invasion. He's not going to say Russia blew up the dam, but he will say the dam never would have been destroyed if Russia hadn't invaded Ukraine. This is absurd, and I am not a representative of any government. I am not a representative of any military. So in this YouTube video, let me make the case for you why, of course, Russia blew up this dam. So I think I've got 19 reasons for you. But we have to start with this. U.S. intelligence points to Russia being behind the Ukraine dam attack. The Biden administration is saying that it's working to declassify intelligence, showing evidence that Russia did it. But if you think the West is full of lies, the United States and Western intelligence is wrong about everything, okay. Let's go on RT News. RT News is the official English propaganda channel to get Russia's message, Russia's truth, out to the world. What kind of evidence and reporting are you going to find on RT News? And I have to share this article with you going back to the beginning. So this article on RT News, this is not a screenshot, you can still find this article on their website. It's dated from the 15th of February of last year. So this is nine days before Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. West has been destroyed without a shot fired. The Russian Foreign Ministry has announced that February 15th is the day Western propaganda failed. With Russia announcing that its troops are pulling back following the completion of exercises near the border with Ukraine, Moscow insisted that predictions it could be just moments away from ordering a full-blown invasion have been proven false. So in the lead-up to this full-scale invasion, Western intelligence was saying Russia's going to do it. Russia is going to invade Ukraine this year. And every day on RT News and Russian sources, they were saying this is absurd. Russia would never attack Ukraine. Russia would never do such a thing. Tensions on the shared border have escalated in recent months, with Western officials raising the alarm that Moscow's troops could soon stage an invasion. The Kremlin has repeatedly insisted that it has no aggressive intentions and has accused English language outlets of whipping up mass hysteria. So according to the Russians, in the lead up to their special limited military operation, they're not going to attack Ukraine. They would never attack Ukraine. Western intelligence is lying. 
Kudos to the Kremlin for leaving up their old propaganda, which makes them look pretty stupid and evil. Here's a tweet from the parody account Darth Putin. The Venn diagram of people explaining why it would not make sense for Russia to invade Ukraine and the people saying it would not make sense for Russia to blow up the dam is a perfect circle. So all of the Kremlin propagandists in the West, Tucker Carlson, Scott Ritter, Gonzo Lira, the Duran, all of these guys are on camera, if you go back in time a year and a half, saying that Russia would never invade Ukraine. It would be stupid for Russia to invade Ukraine. These are the same people today saying that it would be stupid for Russia to blow up this dam. But let's actually listen to the Russians. Ignore the English-speaking propagandists shilling for Russia in the West. What are they actually saying on Kremlin State TV? And Julia Davis with Russian Media Monitor. She's been recording everything the Russians have been saying on Kremlin State TV since the beginning of the war. And they have commentators. They have pundits for the last year who have been calling for blowing up all the dams in Ukraine. They think it's a valid military tar target, valid military tactic to just blow all the dams. So here's a clip of one of their commentators from last year. I'm going to read this for you, but the links to all the full videos will be down below in the description. Our victory depends upon how fast we can destroy the entire critical infrastructure of that country. We're all contributing to achieving it in any way we can. The power plants, the dams, the railways, the highways, these are all legitimate military targets. So in Russia, they don't have freedom of speech, they don't have freedom of press. Everything stated on Kremlin State TV is with the permission of the Ministry of Truth. The Kremlin approves everyone who appears on television and everything they say. And for the last year, they've been saying they're going to blow up the dams in Ukraine. And they're still doing it today. So this clip of Kremlin State TV is from yesterday. And this is what they're saying about the destruction of this dam. Since it came to the destruction of a uh, hydroelectric plant, perhaps we should take a look at the beginning of this cascade, the Kiev hydroelectric power plant. Uh, there is a beautiful reservoir there, slightly above Kiev, four cubic kilometers of water, if I remember correctly. I would ponder on that. What would we achieve with that? Just to simply show them, do you understand? We, a response, is simply needed. So because the Russians are claiming Ukraine destroyed this dam, they're now saying they should destroy more dams. On the uh, Dnieper River, I believe there are three more hydroelectric power plants. So I think there's one located here, which creates this reservoir. There's one located here, which creates this reservoir. And then there's one located just north of Kiev, causing this reservoir. So the Russians on Kremlin State TV this week are threatening to blow up more dams. So in response to this, the Ukrainian government is lowering the water levels of all of these reservoirs for fear that the Russians are going to target more dams. They're currently lowering the water levels to mitigate potential disasters. And destroying Ukraine's ability to produce electricity is Russia's entire main military strategy. Russian revenge strikes further target the power grid. This article is from last October. And last October is when the Russian military announced to the world that they were going to deliberately go after Ukraine's civilian energy infrastructure, destroy as much of it as possible, knock out the power across the country, and then freeze the Ukrainians over the wintertime, force them to negotiations or to surrender. Of course, this didn't work. Russia wasted a bunch of missiles, and Ukraine repaired everything within days or weeks. But you can't repair a hydroelectric power plant should you occupy it and then blow it up. And here's Solvyov, 
I'm actually going to play this clip for you declaring, once again, this is last November, declaring they need to destroy all of Ukraine's capability to produce electricity. So here's Solvyov, the Kremlin's most important propagandist, uh, last November, asking General Sorovikin, who was fired, uh, go ahead and do it. Destroy all of Ukraine's energy infrastructure. So let's uh, recap where we are in this presentation of why Russia blew up the dam. Number one, Russia lies about everything. They've been lying about everything since day one. They have threatened to blow up dams in the past. They are threatening to blow up more dams in the future. And destroying Ukraine's ability to generate electricity is their main focus of their military. It's their stated objective. So let's keep going. Russia rigged the Kherson Dam to explode, according to Ukrainian intelligence. Once again, this article goes back to last October. I'll link it down below. But everyone in Ukraine last October was screaming that Russia's going to blow the dam and then blame Ukraine for doing it. And if you don't believe Ukrainian intelligence, if you think Ukrainians lie about everything, then let's listen to some Russian soldiers. Because on a live stream from last December, a couple drunk Russian soldiers uh, were recorded admitting that they mined the dam. The entire clip is a minute 42. This is what they talk about. But let me read for you what they say in the beginning. Sarah, so you guys just arrived from Kherson or what? Yeah, from Kherson. And back to Kherson then, to the left bank, right? Uh, no, we are going to go back to, we're going to go back to the Kokovka hydroelectric uh, power plant. Uh, oh, to Kokovka. But wait, ours took everything there already. Interrupting the second person, we mined it. Uh, F, that was the gift we're planning for New Year's. Oh, a present. F in the mouth. F it, guys. I'll link the clip down below, but... This is a Russian soldier admitting that they mined the dam last November. And let's go ahead and listen to the Russian military bloggers. What are they saying? Here's a clip from this uh, week from Gazunko. This guy uh, is a Russian military blogger. What does he have to say about the dam being destroyed? How many times have I said that one day this dam would be blown up when we left Kherson. I talked a lot about it, but no one believed me, or rather did, but not everyone. Uh, what I can say for today, I will not say who blew it up. This is a pro-Russian military blogger, and on camera, he doesn't want to say to his audience that Ukraine blew it up. The official position of the Russian government is Ukraine blew up the dam. And this guy doesn't want to lie to his audience. He doesn't want to violate the trust that he's built with his followers. So instead, he just says, I'm not going to say who blew up the dam. From a tactical point of view, the Ukrainians can forget about the uh, offensive in the Kherson direction. That's one thing. And now the question is how effectively organized the evacuation of our guys from the islands, and from the coastline, uh, they will be moved to other positions. The only question is this. If all this goes without losses, we can blow up all the effing dams on the Dnieper River. It's only good for us. So here's a Russian military blogger saying let's do more. Let's blow up the other three hydroelectric power plants on the Dnieper River, it's only good for the Russian military. And Russians have already blown up this dam. Russia's demolition of a roadway over the dam, seen in incredible video, 
This occurred, uh, I think, on November 11th of last year. And there's video. There's CCT video of the Russians blowing up three sections of the road going over the dam. They obviously did this to prevent the Ukrainians from rapidly trying to assault the dam and potentially try and capture it. So Russia, last November, was willing to risk the dam to blow up these three sections. This was a huge explosion, and the Russians didn't care. If they had accidentally destroyed the whole dam, it wouldn't have bothered them. They risked it when they blew up these three sections last November. So let's keep recapping. Russia lies about everything. They've threatened to blow up dams before. They admit they're planning to blow up more dams in the future. Their entire military strategy is blowing up energy infrastructure. The Ukrainians have intelligence saying they mined it. There are Russian soldiers admitting they mined it. And they've already blown up a part of this dam. But let's keep going. I mentioned there was a video from last November, meaning there's CCTV cameras on this dam. Of course there is. So if the Ukrainians uh, were the ones to attack this dam and destroy it, the Russians could release the video. The Russians have the CCT video at the moment of destruction of this dam. And of course, they're not releasing it because they're the ones who blew up the dam. Additionally, if, Ukraine, if the Ukrainian government are a bunch of terrorists and they're the ones who attack the dam, then Russia should be screaming for international experts, international observers, to come into the country and view the destruction. It would take probably 20 minutes for a team of experts and civil engineers to look at the wreckage of the dam to be able to conclude if it was an external attack or an internal detonation. But the Russians aren't going to do this. They're not going to let international experts, international observers visit this dam without being fired on because it's a crime scene. They're the ones who blew it up. And if you need more proof, this can't, this has to be the strongest yet. Russia decided accidents at hazardous facilities would not be investigated shortly before blowing up the Kokovka hydroelectric power plant. So let me explain what happened. If we go back to August 17th of 2009, there was a critical accident at a hydroelectric power plant in Russia, the Sayano Shushkinya power station accident. 75 Russians were killed in this accident. So in response to this negligence at the plant, the Russian government passed a law saying anytime there's a disaster at a critical facility such as a hydroelectric power plant, there has to be a government investigation. Who was responsible? What are some steps that can be taken to prevent these kinds of disasters in the future? But a week ago, the Russian government amended this law, saying that if the destruction is caused by a terrorist attack, no internal investigation is needed. Let me just pause for a moment here. A week ago, Russia amended their laws, saying that if a hydroelectric power plant happens to be destroyed and the government just declares it a terrorist activity, no internal investigation is needed. So let's recap. Russia lies about everything. They threatened to blow up dams in the past. They're threatening to blow up more dams in the future. Destroying energy infrastructure is their whole plan. The Ukrainians said they mined it. The Russians admitted they mined it. Uh, they already blew up a part of the dam in the past. They won't release the CCTV video. <laughs> they won't allow an outside investigation and they have no plans to do an internal investigation. But let's keep going. On Kremlin State TV, Solvyov had a military guest on, and this is what their military experts are saying now that the conditions on the battlefield have shifted. They will not be able to do anything because they have done damage to themselves. Our armed forces, on the contrary, 
have an expanse that will show who, how, and where they will try to cross. The water surface remains anyway, the whole part below the dam, it remains impassable so easily, but the part that remains, the bottom of the reservoir, it would be impossible to cross if they tried, and it becomes much easier to shell it, so from the military point of view, the operational and tactical situation is in favor of the armed forces of Russia. So this is a Russian military expert on Russian state TV declaring that the destruction of this dam militarily benefits the Russian military. Additionally, on Kremlin state TV, they're hedging their bets. They're saying even if the Russians did blow up the dam, it's not a crime. They're allowed to destroy dams during wartime because they did this during World War II. So here is Olevich, he's the one going to be speaking, and this is what he says. Isn't it obvious to you now about the story of the Kokovka hydroelectric power plant? As for the story with the dam, first of all, the word crime was mentioned here. That is not a unique story. During the Great Patriotic War, this is World War II, the dam of the Istra Reservoir was undermined. At the time, it was called the Kubiesh Reservoir. Was that a crime? No, it was not a crime to destroy that reservoir in Russia during World War II. That's what he says. It was profitable for the Red Army during the defense of Moscow at a critical moment in November of 1941. Yes, this also was not talked about for a long time. Then in Soviet times, before perestroika, they limited who wrote about it. But it was not a crime. Now it's just very all clear, looking at the evidence that comes out. I mean, if it benefits Russia, what's wrong with that? So this is the Russians, admitting that in the past they've deliberately blown up dams during wartime if they think it benefits Russia. If it happens during a war, and the Russians believe it benefits Russia, it's not a crime. It's okay to do. They've done it multiple times in the past. They're openly discussing this. Next point I want to make involves uh, this idiot, Kim.com. Here's him wearing an SS helmet. This guy is a neo-Nazi. Uh, internet tycoon under fire for Hitler signed Mein Kampf. German born Kim.com, who is fighting extradition from New Zealand to US for racketeering, says he bought the book as an investment. So Kim.com uh, is a neo Nazi and he greatly supports Russia. Pretty much every Nazi I can find on social media living in the West. They all support Russia. None of them seem to support Ukraine. And Kim.com Kim has 1.4 million followers. This is what he says. A satellite service in France measures the water levels of lakes and water reservoirs like the Nova Kokovka Dam. The data suggests that Ukraine artificially raised the water level in the reservoir to the highest level in eight years just before the dam was destroyed. Smoking gun? And Twitter added a community note because this tweet is misleading. This claim is factually incorrect and misleading. The Novokokovka Dam power and control centers are both on the east left side of the Dnipro River. Russia has been in full control of these buildings and consequently controlled the water level in the dam. So this idiot, who supports Russia every day, claims this is the smoking gun proving guilt of who destroyed the dam. And it's Russia who controlled the water level of the dam. So if we go back to early 2023 of this year, the water level was at a historic low for some reason. They then chose to deliberately raise it to a basically eight-year high before the Russians blew the dam in order to cause maximum ecological and humanitarian damage. And Nazis like Kim.com 
see this, but they're too stupid to realize that Russia is the one who raised the water levels. So let's recap again. They argue that blowing up the dam has militarily helped them today. They brag about their history of blowing up dams in the past, and Russia deliberately raised the water level to the max before blowing the dam. But let's keep going. The situation on the flooded occupied territory is pure horror. Russians are not letting people evacuate, and they're shelling the area. Russia is doing nothing to help these civilians on the south bank of the river. And they're making the situation worse by firing on first responders and civilians trying to help. There are countless videos online, I'll link down below, of the Russian military firing on civilians and first responders trying to save lives in the flooded areas. Russia doesn't care if these people die. And if the Ukrainians actually blew up this dam, if the Ukrainians were responsible for this disaster, then the Russians would be overstating the consequences, not trying to minimize them. Uh, an example is near the dam, there was a zoo. In my last update video, I shared the clip of the zookeeper screaming in horror, knowing that the 300 animals at this zoo were all going to drown. And on TASS, Russian state media, they're saying this zoo doesn't exist. The zoo's not really there. No animals died. If Ukraine did this, they would be saying the zoo had 3,000 animals and they all died. And here's a bizarre clip of Vladimir Soldo. This is the pro-Russian collaborator in charge of the Kherson region filming this video in front of his flooded town saying everything's fine. He says people are calmly moving on the streets. I just drove on the streets. The gas stations are working. Some stores are working. Even the plants are working. If Ukraine did this, they would be saying that this is the worst disaster in history and that everyone's dead and it's all Ukraine's fault. Why are they trying to minimize the ecological and humanitarian disaster? So let's recap. The Russians have argued that blowing up the dam has militarily helped them. They bragged about their history of blowing up dams during wars. They deliberately raised the water level to the max before blowing the dam. They're not allowing their own civilians to evacuate. The Russian military is doing nothing to help civilians in the flooded areas, and they're firing on Ukrainians trying to help civilians on either side. And they're also claiming that the situation is not that bad. So let's now get to Russia's official explanation. Here is Solvyov, the Kremlin's most important media man, giving the official explanation. The United States gave the go-ahead for its HIMARS strikes on the Kokovka hydroelectric power plant. So Russia's official story, they're the ones occupying the dam, they have all the evidence. They're claiming that Ukraine blew up the dam with HIMARS. The problem with this is HIMARS cannot destroy this dam. Ukraine has already struck this dam dozens of times with HIMARS without causing a critical failure. So this image is from last August, uh, before the Russians retreated from the city of Kherson, and the Ukrainians were using HIMARS to blow up the canal bridge and the canal rail line, as well as a section of the bridge here, to prevent rail traffic and heavy vehicles from crossing the river. And they struck this dam dozens of times with HIMARS missiles, incapable of bringing it down. HIMARS could not even bring down the Antonovsky Bridge. The pictures and videos from last August and September, as the Ukrainians again and again struck the Antonovsky Bridge, and it was only when the Russians retreated in November, placing explosives underneath the bridge, was the bridge finally capable of being brought down. So if the Ukrainians could destroy this dam with a high Mars, then they could have done it going all the way back to last July. Ukraine never destroyed it, 
because that would be a terrible thing to do. Additionally, when the Soviets built all these dams, they deliberately designed them to survive a near attack, a near miss from a nuclear weapon. Everything the Soviets did revolved around survivability from a nuclear exchange from the West. So this was a pretty tough dam, and hitting it with a HIMARS is not going to bring it down. Even if they were to punch a hole or cause some damage, there probably would have been uh, spillage or, or some kind of minor cascade before the entire dam critically failed. This dam is only structurally capable of being brought down by having tons of explosives placed deep inside the dam. That is what caused the critical failure. So these are all the reasons. I mean, I've restated them so many times, uh, but the final one I have to mention, Ukraine would not have done this right before their upcoming counteroffensive. I think this is the week. I think Ukraine is launching this week. Russia had the intelligence, and they deliberately blew the dam to cause chaos and confusion. And I strongly believe that Russia is probably going to withdraw from Zaporizhia and Kherson sometime this summer. So mark me down on your calendar. You can come back on September 1st and say, I told you so. But by September 1st, Russia will have retreated back to Crimea. I think Russian forces will 100% be out of Kherson and almost entirely be out of Zaporizhia by the end of this summer. So the Russians know this. The Russians know they're losing, and they have no problem killing everyone and destroying everything. And by blowing this dam, they've ruined the canal network that feeds fresh water to all the farmers in this region. Without proper irrigation, this section of Ukraine is going to dry out and turn to desert. So if you notice this right here and all of this right here, this is arid desert not being used as farmland. In addition, this dam produced electricity. Electricity for millions of residents in Kherson, and now it's gone for, for the foreseeable future. So let's recap Russia's disastrous three-day special military operation. Going back to April, they were taking horrendous losses, so they entirely pulled out of the north. In September, during the Kharkiv counteroffensive, they got their asses kicked, their front line collapsed, and they retreated back to Luhansk. Going back to November, they were taking horrendous losses on the north bank of the river, so they eventually retreated back to the south. By blowing this dam, Russia is signaling that they're already prepared to abandon this region. There's not a lot going on there anyways, uh, so they're going to pull back to Crimea and, and tell their soldiers to make a last stand there. Here's an interesting map from Ukraine Battle Map. If we go back to August 1st of last year, so the last 10 months of this war, how much territory has Ukraine recaptured? 17,000 square kilometers. Whereas with Russia's winter offensive, the assaults on Bakhmut, the fighting in the Donbass, how much territory has Russia taken offensively in the last 10 months? And it's only 975 square kilometers. This war is not going well for Russia, and everyone in Russia knows it. So if Russia can get away with this, blowing up a hydroelectric power plant, blaming Ukraine, and then having governments or international institutions saying, I guess we'll never know what happened, then Russia can do it again. Russia can blow up the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant when they retreat from the Zaporizhia region and just say Ukraine did it. Ukraine blew up their own hydroelectric power plant. Ukraine blew up their own <laughs> nuclear power plant. Doesn't matter what evidence we provide that Russia obviously did it. As long as the Russian government never admits to it, there is this fraction of the population that will just say, we'll never know. It's not acceptable. 
Offensive is going better than expected, according to the United States. The White House says it's too early to tell how the destruction of the dam will affect Ukraine's counteroffensive. I think this is the week. I think all the pieces are in motion. Units are in play. I think uh, amphibious landings across the river were planned. Uh, Russia had the satellite images. They knew what was coming. So they blew the dam in order to, one, ro lower the level of the reservoir so it's all mud flats now. But below the river, it's now flooded. When the water recedes, once again, it's going to be very muddy. So yes, this definitely did affect Ukraine's counteroffensive, but I still think it's a go. I still think things are in motion. I'll talk to you guys more about this in my next update video, how it's going, what's happening. Uh, this video has gone pretty long. Also worth mentioning is the Freedom of Russia Legion and the Russian Volunteer Corps is still occupying territory in Russia and the Belgorod region, so that's good news. Let's wrap up this video, and I just want to share a couple clips with you. The first one is a pretty interesting vehicle that first responders in Kherson are using to save lives. Those are some cool vehicles. Final clip I have for you is uh, Ukrainians trying to save lives. <laughs> That's all for this update video. Glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. If you found this video informative, give me a thumbs up and maybe consider sharing it. Um, if you have any comments and questions, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, keep defending the truth, keep defending democracy.